Hey YouTube, this is Tushar and in today's video we are going to look into React and we'll use Code Academy course of React for that. Uh, it is very intuitive course, so we'll go one by uh, one through each step and we'll understand what what is React and how we can use it for our project. So basically, uh, React is a JavaScript library and it it was developed by Facebook engineer. And the few reasons that uh, why you should react instead of other framework. Uh, first of all, React is not framework. React, uh, react is a library. It means it do only one thing, and which is to uh, render view. So it 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 just worried about the view part of your web app. How how you can like uh, work on your views. How you can make it so it is easy to test it. It, it is easy to uh, reuse it so it takes care of all that so react is very fast why react is fast because it uh, uses a phenomena or uh, something called virtual dom which means that uh, you will uh, update the real dom with the only changes happening in your web app not the whole part like some part of your web app so it's suppose uh, So this is h1 so first time when you render it through component in react it will update the real dom with this hello world but now suppose after some time it changed to this so now it will just update the real dom with this react is awesome and it will not update this again so this is what virtual dom is so virtual dom how the react use virtual dom is it has two copies of virtual dom one the previous one so the previous one was a copy of virtual dom was containing this uh, part only but the new copy uh, the changed copy of virtual dom contains this thing so it compares both and it comes to know that okay this is the or this is the thing which got updated so it will update the real dom with this part only so it is faster this is just an example how virtual dom works in react and it is modular like uh, you can divide the whole application into different different components so it is easy to reuse and it, it is very easy to debug it so suppose i have made this portfolio using react like so if you check this portfolio so uh, this is one component this is one component skills is one component and job offers is one component I'm fetching the uh, data from GitHub inside the job offers. So you can divide it into further component. Like skills can be divided into particular skills. So skill can be a component. So skills component contain four nested skill component. One, two, three, four. Similarly, you can divide divide the job offers, or you can say jobs component into job component. So it has uh, n number of job component. So this is how React works. Divide your uh, web app into as many as component possible. So uh, this is the first part, which just tell what is React and why you should use it. Uh, you can read it, read on it uh, if you want, and we'll move further. So basically, uh, this is uh, where h1 equal to uh, h1 tag and inside that we have a text called hello world so it is neither it is not html right because we are using where h1 so this is something called jsx in uh, uh, react so since you are using it inside the javascript it cannot be an html otherwise you should you should have wrapped it inside some strings if you if you want to use it so what is jsx so if suppose I'm writing some component in React, let's suppose first in uh, in order to use uh, React on code pen, you just select Babel as your pre preprocessor, so then uh, so that you can use the new JavaScript syntax, and then select the React and React DOM library.
so i'll remove it i'll make a container over here i'll write a simple react component so let's do that i'll write a hello world component So my component is just returning this HTML uh, called hello world. So this is how we define a particular component in React. So this is my uh, this is the name of my component. But you just have defined your React component. You have not used it. You have how you will render into a page, how you will just pass this to uh, this into a page so that uh, you can look it on the screen. So for that uh, we use React DOM dot render. So now here it will accept two uh, argument. Uh, the one is the name of the component you want to render to a real DOM. Hello world. And where you want to render that component. So I want to render it here inside the div with an ID of container. So I'll write So what I said uh, here is just uh, render the render my component in a, in the DOM. So it accepts two argument the name of the component and where you want to render it. So if you will not use it here, this has no meaning. You are just defining the component here, but if you want to render it on the screen, you have to use React DOM dot render. So now we were talking that what is this. Uh, this thing inside the JavaScript. This is not HTML, right? You cannot write HTML like this inside JavaScript. So this is what JSX is. So if you suppose you are confused, you are saying that it is not a good practice to include HTML inside JavaScript. Uh, we can remove it. What we can say is, I want to render dev. It do not have any attributes. And the text is hello world. It will work the same if you see. Let's make it S2. It's nice you see here we got the same text on the screen. So, what's the difference? So, uh, if you are confused that why should I use uh, HTML inside, uh, HTML like syntax inside the JavaScript. You can this uh, you can use this, but it will be uh, the code will become messy if you are writing uh, React uh, if you are writing some uh, elements using this React dot create element because if it will have nested component, it will be very easy to it will be very difficult to uh, read it. So if suppose uh, this is not a S two, this is a div element. And I want to render two more component inside it. So what then what I need to do is so the my second component will be react dot create element. So first I'll write S2. And the text will be react uh, that is awesome and then I want to uh, render one more component which is react dot create element p
I will use JSX in React. So if you see here, it is very easy to read it, right? So you have this much of code. So uh, basically you have a div inside that you have one S2 element and one P element which you are rendering inside this container. So let's just check it. If you see here, here we have container. And using React, we are rendering a div, and div has two childs, S2 and P. So if you're looking here, it is looking easy. But if you again check here, it is very hard to read it. So just for sake of simplicity, instead of writing this, we can say div. And inside that we have S2 with React is good. I will use JSX in react so if you see it it did, did the same thing like the previous syntax but it is very easy to read so this is what jsx is this is what uh, let you simplify your uh, component that what element it is returning so this component is returning a div which has two element inside it but if you would have written the same thing uh, with without jsx this is jsx without jsx it would be very difficult to read it and it would be very difficult to maintain the code if the, you have a lot of nested elements. So in, you can go to here into Babel and you can just check it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna paste this code. So this is my JSX site and if you see here we did this here. So this JSX, uh, when it got compiled, because uh, the browser did not understand, did not understand uh, JSX. It only understand JavaScript. So this is what the JavaScript format of this JSX element. But it is uh, while developing your application, it is very easy to write in this format. But Babel will help you to convert it into this behind the scene, and you don't have to worry about it. So we have written both code here, this one and this one, and this one is very easy. And that's why we prefer to use JSX inside React. So this is what it is explaining here. So if you see here, it is saying JSX is a syntax extension for JavaScript. It was written to be used with React. JSX code looks at a lot like HTML as we have seen. Uh, and JSX is not valid JavaScript as I told you Babel help us to convert it to JavaScript so that browser can understand it but we don't have to worry about it if a JavaScript file contains JSX code then that file will have to be compiled that means that before the file reaches a web browser a JSX compiler will translate any JSX into regular JavaScript as I told you Babel is that compiler which will translate JSX into JavaScript So here, a basic unit of JSX is JSX element. So this is JSX element. This is also a JSX element. It exactly look like HTML. The only difference is you find you will find a JSX inside JavaScript file instead of HTML file. This is correct because we are writing uh, JSX here inside JavaScript. It is saying that 
JSX element are treated as JavaScript expressions. They can go anywhere that JavaScript expression can go. That means that a JSX element can be saved in a variable, passed to a function, stored in an object or array, you name it. So here is an example of JSX element in change it into a variable. So I'll explain it to you. What it is saying is, I think I can do uh, hello equals. I'm not sure. Let's see. And instead of rendering it here, I will just use uh, this uh, curly braces syntax and say hello. So let me wrap it inside the brackets and um, or I can do one more thing. Just a minute. Let's try this one first. I'll remove it. All right. Hello. So yeah, if you see it worked right, I'm able to use uh, I'm able to store the JSX uh, inside a variable just like any other JavaScript expressions. So this is what it is they are explaining it over here. So here, what they did is uh, they are creating a object, and inside that they are storing different different JSX elements. What now it is saying that JSX element can have attribute just like HTML element. So what it means is the in HTML element you can give class attribute, ID attribute, image has source attribute, input has type equal to text attribute. Similarly, you can give that attribute to uh, JSX element. So this is how you write an attribute to a JSX element. They have uh, this p element has attribute id with a value of last this p element has attribute of id with a value of small and they can have as many as attribute possible so how to explain it what i can do is i can say id equal to name this is an attribute. This is a J, uh, attribute that I am writing inside a JSX, JSX element. So I can say name will have color of orange. So you see the color of uh, that S2 element, JSX element changed. So this is what they are trying to explain it over here. Uh, you can nest JSX element inside other JSX element. Uh, we have already done that. So we have nested S2 and P inside a div element. That is what it is trying to explain. But one more thing, what I'm, I want to explain you here, which is very important is, I cannot uh, write two, uh, more than one JSX element as the outermost element. So what I mean to say is, if suppose I write div, which has something with hello inside it, and I want to write one more div, which has world inside it. So this is a wrong syntax. You cannot write it like this. I mean, you can write it, but there is some rule that you have to follow. What is that rule is, see if you are getting some error over here, which means invalid regular expressions. 
so basically what it means is you can not have the outermost element should be single so if you want to use two divs one with hello one will work one with world wrap it inside a another div to use it if uh, now you see you got both hello and world so every component should return a single uh, element which can have any number of nested element inside it but the outermost element should be single i cannot say div bracket it will give me it will throw an error see so the outermost element should be single inside that you can have as many number of elements so i can nest it further more i can say h3 or s2 hello this is possible but outermost remember outermost you should have one element uh, as a uh, element uh, which got returned by the component and inside it write as number of elements you want to write so let's move on so i told you that there is a rule that we have mentioned jsx expression must have exactly one outermost element so outermost element should be one this code will not work because you are returning two elements if you want to make it work wrap these both the element inside a element if you check here the first opening tag and the final closing tag of a jsx expression must belong to the same jsx element what it means is the first opening tag is this and the final closing tag is this so it both belong to a same element which it, it is belonging here so this is a valid jsx expression but this is not valid because this is the opening tag here it belongs to different paragraph and the closing tag here belongs to different paragraph but if you wrap it inside a div then it will become a valid jsx expression i have already told you how to render the jsx expression we use react dom dot render so this is uh, the syntax which will help you to uh, show your component on the screen if you will not use react dom dot render you have defined your component but you cannot use it so so either uh, this i told you that react dom dot render will uh, accept two argument first is the jsx uh you can say react component and the second is the place where you want to render your component in the dom but not only it can uh accept react component it can also accept react element so this is a react element right so this is also a valid syntax if you check here so this is what it is trying to explain it over here so javascript is case sensitive so make sure to capitalize react dom correctly so just remember this uh, syntax So React DOM is the name of JavaScript library. This library contains several React specific methods, all of which will deal, deal with the DOM in some way or another. So basically, it is a library which help you to uh, communicate with the DOM in the browser. This is one of the method that React DOM library has. It may have other, but mostly we use this method only.
so here what it is saying is uh, the first uh, argument of react dom dot render can be a variable also what it means is i can say something like const list equals so that i can say ul So if I want to render it, I can just call that variable. I can just pass that variable as the first argument, and it will render that list. So this is what they are trying to explain in this part. So I have to run this code, I guess. So where my list equals let's try to see So I'm doing the same thing so that I can go to the next step. I'll copy this. I'm going to So I, in the beginning only I told you about the virtual DOM. One special thing about React DOM dot render is that it only updates DOM element that they have that have changed. That means if you render the exact same same thing twice, then although the second render will do nothing. So what it means here is, if suppose uh, they are already got this, okay, ul ally, ul with uh, two allies. Uh, with text JavaScript and React. So if I'll again try to render it, if I refresh the page, nothing will happen because uh, there is no change in your code. But if suppose I add one more ally, so now this time uh, they will just update this part to the DOM to the screen. So it will be pretty fast, right? You are not again updating the whole part. You are just updating the part that got updated. So this is what they are explaining here. So here they have created a variable, saved the JSX element inside it. They are rendering hello. And if you render it again, this code will not do anything at all. So this is very significant. Only update the necessary DOM element is a large part of what makes react so successful react accomplished this thanks to something called virtual dom before moving on to the next topic so we don't uh, i'm not sure i'll check it out but we'll here we'll move to the next lesson so we have uh, completed the gsx intro in this one
one more thing i want to tell you and they are excluding it as well so we'll write one more component let's write our component cost profile equals so if you are wondering what this syntax is this is a arrow how we write arrow function in es6 if you are not understanding this we can also write where profile this is same as the previous one so this will return So this is uh, my component. Again, I have done a big mistake. I cannot have two outermost components. I have to wrap it inside a div. So let's do that. So now my the uh, this component is valid, or you can say this JSX expression is valid. So if suppose I want to give it a class to HTML element. What I do is I'll go and write class attribute with value of name. But since we are writing JSX not HTML and we are writing this inside JavaScript, class is uh, already a reserve word, so we cannot use class. So let's suppose I go here. I say name. Color red. First of all, I have to use React DOM to render it to screen. I'll say the recommended practices use first letter as capital for computer components. So it is rendering my component, but it is not applying to uh, the style that I've applied to the class name. Because class is a reserve word in JavaScript, I cannot use class as an attribute uh, in in JSX. So to add the substitute is I will write class name. Now if you see my color will change to red. Refresh it once. If you see now, my color is changed to red. So I can write ID because but I cannot write class. I have to use class name. This is the only difference. One of the difference with, uh, between HTML and JSX. So if you see they are explaining the same thing, you cannot use class, you have to use class name. So they are saying me to do something, I'll do it. So it's saying that uh, declare a variable. Now I think you guys are understanding what I'm doing. So we have discussed this resolving. So I'll create my element and I'll write this I'm a big diff. And I'll since I cannot use class, I'll use class name. And I'll give it look. Run it. Underneath you div call react.render. Obviously, we have to call react from render.
and we'll render it inside the element with an id of app we are done see how big is it that's what is telling if you render div as a class of big then it should look big in the browser it is looking big in the browser move on so another js6 gotcha is Involve self closing text. Self closing text, what it is. So, if the if in uh, I assume you have seen that br as a self closing tag, image as a self closing tag, hr as a self closing tag. So, the same thing we do. With the react components if you see here i have used uh, i have called this component and it is a self closing because it don't have anything inside it it, it is just returning some elements so this is what they are trying to explain it over here most html element use two tags opening tag closing tag they use opening tag closing tag paragraph Headings use opening tag closing tag. However, some HTML elements such as image input use only one tag. The tag that belongs to a single tag element isn't an opening tag or not a closing tag. It is a self-closing tag. So image input don't have don't have opening or closing tag. They are they have self-closing tag. When you write a self-closing tag in HTML, it is optional to include a forward slash immediately before the final angle bracket. So, either you can write this or you can simply write this. It is optional in HTML. How we will explain? Let's use HR. So, either you can use this, uh, either you can use this forward slash or you don't. It will work in both case, but in JSX it is compulsory. You have to include the slash. If you write self closing tag in JSX and forget the slash, you will raise an error. Okay, so let's see. So let's remove this slash and let's see what happens. So it is giving me some error. Unexpected token illegal. So let's check the console real quick. Okay, I don't have any error, but it is showing error over here. So let's put this uh, slash again. The error is gone. So remember, you have to include the uh, forward slash in the uh, in the self closing element uh, component. So here we are uh, writing this inside javascript file so this is jsx so i have to use a self closing tag over here in order to fix this here in image also i have done it it will work so now at least you know how to write a component what is jsx now it is different from this JavaScript way of defining the uh, uh, rendering the React element. Oh, uh, why it is taking too much time? I think I have fixed all the broken JSX elements. Let's do it again. Uh, we have some problem.
So you can write some regular JavaScript also inside JSX expression. So if you see here inside React one dot render, I'm using H1 inside it. I'm using this evaluation. We are adding two numbers. So let's write it. Let's see what happened in the browser. Here we can see the result. So uh, we are getting the this as a string two plus three and it is just surrendering the same thing. So how we can evalu evaluate it? We'll see in the next one. So in JSX, if you want to uh, evaluate anything, just wrap it inside the pair of curly braces. Now it will give me result five. If I'll run it, sorry. So I've showed it to you before. I've used that variable. I've used the. I've saved paragraph tag inside it, and I have just rendered it over here. I can do it again. I'm using a variable. Para equals monkey. So I want to render this variable inside JSX. Just use this curly braces, right? Para, and you're done. You see, I got this result again. So same thing we are trying to show it here. So now it gave me result five because I have wrapped that uh, sum inside the curly braces. Let's move to the next exercise. So let's see what it's saying. Uh, the code is written in JavaScript file. By default, it will be treated as regular JavaScript. Yes. This is JS extension file. Find div on line 5. From there, up through div, the code will be treated as JSX. Yes, this whole thing is JSX. Find math. From there, up through 20, the code will be treated as regular JavaScript again. Yes, this is a regular JavaScript, which is we are just writing inside the curly braces so that we, uh, it will be evaluated to some thing. The curly braces themselves won't be treated as JSX nor as JavaScript. They are markers that signal the beginning and end of JavaScript injection into JSX. Obviously, here also we have, this is a JavaScript variable. So this, this we are writing inside the curly braces. So we are injecting JavaScript inside the JSX using this curly braces. Select app.js, declare a new variable called math. Let's declare a variable over here, math. Set math equal to JSX element h1, h1. Put the following text inside h1. So, it's, so what we are doing is 2 plus 3 plus equal to 2 plus 3. So it, if I'll render it now using react dom dot render, it will give this as a string. Let's check it. Now if I'll run it, I'll get the 2 plus 3 equal to 2 plus 3. Correct. If I want to evaluate it, I will wrap it. So this is JSX H1. This is JavaScript. And I'm injecting JavaScript inside JSX using this curly research. Now if I'll run it, it will give me a true because we are not true. Because it has one sign.
Okay. Or I can do it here. Two. I want the addition over here. And I want to display this as a string. So it will now return me 2 plus 3 equal to 5. If I'm not wrong. So this is correct. So this I want as a string. So I wrote it inside outside the curly braces. And this I want to evaluate. So I wrote it inside the curly braces. And it gave me 2 plus 3 equal to 5. So it's saying that when you inject JavaScript into JSX, that JavaScript is part of same environment as the rest of JavaScript in the file. That means that you can access variables while inside of a JSX expression, even though the variable are declared outside. This is correct. So here, declare a variable, access your variable inside JSX expression name. Correct. Replace red down dot render first argument is fn h1 use curly braces at the argument is equal to the first one. So what it is saying is sorry use h1 tag. This is again JSX. I'm using curly braces, it means I want to inject some JavaScript inside JSX. And that JavaScript is variable the best thing. That's it. Let's run this call and see what happened in browser. We got the text. When writing JSX, it is common to use variable to set attributes. Okay. Notice how in this example limit attribute is get their own line. Correct. It you know instead of writing this all in a single line, I can break it into multiple lines to make it more readable. So here I can say You can divide your element into multiple lines for more readability. Object properties also often used to set attributes. Pitch, panda, or alpha, panda image, panda or alpha. And the lines are declared in variable name whose image set its value x equal to JSX image. Let's do that. Use image equals image we are writing jsx with src so that it will be very little bit same set the value equal to boost variable boost so to use this curly braces Okay, use image. So now I have to render it. So what we do for render, we use React DOM. First argument will be this variable boost image. The second argument will be this let's run it
Yeah, we got the image. GXX element can have event listener just like HTML element. You can create event listener by giving a JSX element special attribute. Yeah, I can write event uh, listener inside uh, inside JSX element using this uh, thing. An event listener attribute name should be something like on click on mouse hover. Uh, event listener attribute name should be like this on click on hover something. The word on plus the type of event that you are listening for. You can see a list of valid here. An event listener attribute value should be function. The above expression would only work if my function were a valid function that has been defined once here. But in HTML, HTML are written in all lower case. Yeah, in HTML we write like this. But in if you want to write inside JSX element, we will use like this. So this is one more difference between JSX and HTML. First, we'll see here what this is saying us to do. Look at line 17. We have DOM dot renders being passed to null argument. Render kitty by returning the first null to the kitty. It is this. It is returning an image. Let's do it. Kitty. The second null will be replaced by document dot get element by argument. Let's do that. Add an on click attribute to image. Set on click value equal to make doggy function. So I have to add on click attribute. You know, you write like this, and the value will be make doggy function. So I again I'm uh, writing JavaScript because function is a JavaScript thing. So I'll use curly braces. What I want to do is make the gif. So this is how I'll write event listener inside JSX. Remember, since attributes are a part of this expression, we will need to inject JavaScript in order to use make target. Click run. Let's see what happens. I got an image. Let's see what that image will do on click. Seeing nothing. Oh, it changed to doggy. Yeah. So this is what this make doggy function is doing. So, ah, uh, let's see once again. JSX element can have event listener just like HTML element can. Programming in React means constantly working with event listeners. We can create an event listener by giving a JSX element a special attribute. This is how you write that attribute. An event listener attribute name should be something like on click on mouse over. But how you write in uh, HTML is simply all small case. So let's write a uh, event listener for our code. So I'll say here on click equals I write a function my font. And I'll declare the function over here. My fun. So I've created, I've wrote an event listener. Inside, the, I define the function, and inside that function, I'm just alerting. I'm using event listener. So let's click on H1, H2. Sorry, I got the alert. I'm using it. This is how you write event listener in JSX. Let's move on.
here is a rule that we need to know you cannot inject an if statement in jsx expression yes that is correct you cannot write if inside jsx expression this code will break this will break because you are trying to write if inside jsx the reason why has to do with the way that jsx is compiled you don't need to understand the mechanics of it for now what if you want a jsx expression to render but only under certain circumstances you can't inject an if statement we have lot of option in the next few lesson we'll explore some simple way to write conditionals in jsx awesome how can you write a conditional if you can inject an if statement into jsx if yes one option is to write if statement and not inject it into jsx Look at if dot js followed by statement. So let's see if user dot age is greater than changing age message. Let's check out this alcoholic beverage. Else, check out this earning. I got a players message. So here it is checking condition, and on the basis of condition, it is rendering some JSX. So this is one way you can. Use conditionals, and on the basis of conditionals, you can render different elements. So, if user age is greater than the drinking age, it will render the first element, and if it is lower than that, it will render this part. So, this will work because it is not injected inside JSX. Instead, the JSX is in in injected inside if. <coughs> Sorry. In order to sing this, select app JS, start on line 15, write if else statement. So let's write a if else statement. So if coin toss equal to head, then make where image equal to this. So this is a if condition that we have. We'll copy it over here. At that point, it will render this. Awesome. Else, render this. So randomly they are with the random function they are evaluating a value if it is less than 0.5 it will return head otherwise it will return tails that what we are saying here if point toss function returns head we will show this image otherwise we will show this image let's run this code first it will not work i told you you need to write react dot dom, react dom dot render What we are returning here is image. Second argument will be same. Let's see. We got the cat image. Let's run this once again. Again, cat, cat, you who we got dog. Some error. Yeah, awesome. Let's move to next. If you want to check it here, we can check it. Let's see how we can check it. Remove this. Uh, 
if you want, right? So for us, we'll make this where React is good. Let's be let's make it true. And pass that variable over here. And declare a variable inside a statement. Similarly, we can write else. So here we'll render that variable a. So since it is true, it will return me. Let's learn React. But if I'll make it false, it will go to the else and it will return me. Let's learn view then. This is how you can use if conditional with JSX. So you can write condition using ternary operator as well. So what it means is instead of writing this i could have said something like react is good if it is true return this Otherwise, if it is false, return view. Okay, something is not working. I have written wrong ternary code. Let's see over here. Basically, what ternary code do is, if this expression evaluates to true, it will return the first part before colon. If this false, it will return this. So it is not working. Oh, let's see with this. I think now it will work. Okay, it's not working now also. What if I'll do two here? Let's see what's the error. A is not defined. Okay. I can say where A. Now I got React. Because, so if I'll write because I have written true, so it will return the first condition. So it was not working because A was not defined. I have just used A, but it, it was not defined anywhere. So I declared it first, then used it. Now we'll check with this. Now it will return view. So if I'll make it true, it will again return react. So this is how you use ternary operator. Let's see what they have done here. The ternary operator works the same way in React as it done in regular JavaScript. 
you write this this expression when your code is executed x is evaluated as either true false if x is true then the way button can write yes if x is true it will return this if x is false it will return z z okay so we can use the kanji operator inside jsx expression so we'll do that x2 x2 so here i'm using a ternary expression correct so it means i have to use this curly braces because i am injecting javascript inside jsx so now i'll say react is good question mark return react otherwise return view correct so it returned me react because it is true if it is false it will return me view so you can write ternary x uh, of expression inside jsx now it is saying that on line 14 replace xyz with the following three expressions we have to decide which is x which is y which is z obviously x will be a condition if it will be true it will return y and then z so i think this will be this and we can put anything in y and z because if the condition will really be false it will return uh, kitty and if the condition is true it will Return doggy. Let's run this code. So they have some specific criteria. So they are saying write kitty here and write doggy here. Okay, let's run this so that we can move to next challenge. We can. We are going to cover one final way of writing conditional in React, the AND operator. It's not React specific, but it shows up in React as well. Okay. In the last two lesson, you wrote statement that would sometimes render a kitty, another time render a dog. So let's see what they are saying here. Declared a variable J6 element. Ally, not baby. Okay. So here, what is happening is if you use and and as a conditional way, it will sometimes do an action, but other times will do nothing at all. So 
if age is greater than 15 i guess it will return this if age is greater than 20 it will return this let's see using use the and operator to make so that this expression will only appear here if change number so line number is what 13 so this nacho will come only so first of all i am using uh, this conditional so i have to wrap it inside this curly braces and then i have to say wait a minute okay let's do it then i'll show you why this is wrong is this condition fulfilled then only under it so it will be wrong because it will have the empty ally if this condition do not fulfill so let's fix it what this saying is write it here now run it so it is showing it if i run it again it may not show it because it is randomly calculating it let's run it once again and then come See, this time it didn't come. This nacho see is because the term uh, condition is fulfilled. So, this is one more way of writing conditional inside JSX. So, if you have an array, you can use dot map to render all of its elements. So, if you want to create an element uh, that map. You, you can use map if you want to create an element from a list of array like this is the list and i want to render it i can use dot map so how we will do this what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use all these Angular view. I want to render it all, so I can use map. So let's take clear one more variable. No law. G's dot map. It's accept this function, callback function. It will return list. So let's make it like here. What I can say is write a technology. Awesome. Here. If I try to render element, let's see what happens. not working so let's use a ul i think you are returning a multiple you are returning multiple elements so that's why it's not working let's check with this awesome it worked so i told you that outermost element for the react should be single element so ul is single inside it we can have multiple elements so that's how you use uh, dot map method of array 
to render an array as element in React. This you do a lot when you are working with uh, APIs. You will get the data in the form of array of objects. Then you will use map to invert it inside the JSX element, and then you render it. Let's read it. So they have done the same thing. They have created array, one more variable, map, string. So every time this will have one value of the array. First time it will have React, second time it will have Angular, third time it will have you. Here also, first time it will have home, then shop, then about. It is returning li and we are putting it inside ul. It's finally just it. So you can put ally also inside array if you want, and you can just render the variable. You can see that a map policy partially set up on line eight. Yes, the returned expression should be an ally containing the person parameter. So we have already done it. Will return. What will return is ally. What the ally will have this variable person use curly braces because we are inserting JavaScript inside JSX. So what this person is first time this person I will have this then this then this use react down dot render here because otherwise it will not be available on the screen. Use that variable people. And the second argument will be this. Run it, we'll get the list. Yes, okay. They don't want this, I guess. But I generally prefer to put it with the uh, parentheses. And that works. What happened here? Oh, you have to wrap it inside here. We did in our program here also. We have to do the same. If you check here, we have the did it inside here. We are just passing this variable. Oh shit. Curly braces. How we can follow that this? Now run it work. So we get all the three people. Moving to the next challenge. When you make a list in JSX, sometimes you include keys. Yes, I'll show you what it is saying. Whenever map is you are working with map, you have to pass a particular key to all of your elements otherwise it will throw an error it will not break the code but it will throw an error uh, it's not showing here but how you will do that is the basic thing is use an index so first time it will it, this technology will have react index will be zero and the technology will have angular index will be one and the, the technology will have view index will be two so here we can say key equals index now we can check we'll check
we'll see here. When you make a list in JSX, sometimes your list will need to include something called key. Okay, we are making a list, so we should have a key. Keys can be, it should be unique, as you see here. A key is a JSX attribute, the attribute name is key. The attribute value should be something unique, similar to ID attribute. Please don't do anything that you can see. React uses them internally to keep track of list. If you don't use key, when you're supposed to, React might accidentally scramble your list item into wrong order. Not all lists need to have keys. A list needs keys if either of the following two. The list item have memory from one render to next. For instance, when a to-do list renders, each item must remember whether it was checked off. The item should get amnesia when they render. A list order might be shuffled. For instance, a list of search results might be shuffled from one to the next. In this kind of scenario, you need keys. So if you have a to-do list and if suppose for one to do like uh, work done react project you make the check through and for one to do that have to learn a redux the check is not true so it, it can keep track of that if you have a key for all the list elements same with the search result so because it can be shuffled uh, shuffled every time it may render in a different sequence it should have a key to keep track of all the uh, list return on line 8, give your ally a key, value in this case, loop over returns. Awesome. So, if you see our example over here, we have used index and we are passing index as a value. Same thing, they are seeing that use key. Can be any name it need not to be index i can use i also that's what they are they want to do Okay, they are saying use this. So let's reload it or reset it. They are saying instead of using only I, use this. Let's run this. So this will be common and I will change. Map has two parameters. Or obviously map should have two parameters. Let's go to next. You can write the code without JSX at all. We have written like this using react.create element. So let's do it again. Okay. So he's saying that we have this JSX. How you can write using React element in JavaScript? The element is there. Attribute inside it is null. The value is I am div. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, it should be in spring. Sorry. So this is all about JSX and React and we have used Code Academy to learn about different things that we can do uh, in using JSX and React and JSX is very powerful just uh, try to write your component using JSX instead of React or Create Element and you can do a lot of things remember something that they use class name instead of class because class is a reserve word in JavaScript uh, What else? Uh, you cannot use if inside the JSX ex, uh, expression, JSX element, but you can use uh, if uh, JSX expression inside the if and else. You can use primary operator for your conditionals. You can use and then for your conditionals. Uh, apart from that, uh, in React DOM dot render, you can render uh, the component. You can render JSX element, and you can render a variable also. And if you want to inject some JavaScript inside JSX, you have to use curly braces. If you want to uh, use variable inside JSX, you cannot directly put it. You have to put it inside curly braces. That's all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. And in the next one, we'll learn React component, which is again an awesome topic. And we have seen what React component is. Over here, we have we have stayed once again last time where code function so this is what a component is in react Here we'll render our component. If you'll not write forward slash, it will not work. You have to write it. It will return code academy is awesome. Okay. So this is how you define a component in React. Uh, but don't worry about it for now. We'll discuss uh, discuss it in the next video. For now, just practice more and more with uh, JSX and React and go through the code academy react.js tutorial uh, or course and i'll see you in the next one if you like this video just comment on this video uh, what you want to see more like this video and subscribe to my channel this will help me to make more and more videos like that